Morning. 30. We made it to 30, ladies and gentlemen. How exciting. I never would have thought that I would have been able to do it. And I'm very, very proud of myself. If I'm being honest, that I made it to 30 doing these daily, and I repeat, daily uploads. 30th day of November, 30 videos in 30 days. Let's make a cup of coffee and talk about video games. I am trying to stay away from news, but there is a topic that I do want to cover today, and that is this conversation around the Xbox and it going away. Bye bye Xbox, see ya. Who needs ya? I'm joking. I, I don't think that Xbox is going away, but there was a conversation online with some C-level execs and they talked about the future of Xbox and without boring you with the details and also not being able to provide all the details because this isn't a news show, this is more of a let's talk about video games, I want to uh, basically sum it up. Essentially, there is a, uh, there was someone who said that they wanted a C-level, I think it was the CFO? I forgot which one. That they are looking to bring Xbox everywhere. That is their goal. They want to see it on every, and I repeat, every screen they can. <sighs> For those of you who don't like this sound, all right, all done. You didn't have to hear it. I hear you loud and clear. I know that some of you like it, but I understand that it does, and I look at the audio, it does peak the audio, and uh, if I'm going to be honest, I don't like that so we're going to hide the grind um so essentially what's happening with xbox is someone came out uh one of the sea levels was like oh we're out of your screen and now the internet is going they're going the sega route they're not going to have hardware anymore they're all going to be software and they're trying to get their service on every single system out there which i don't think is a completely outlandish idea uh, nor do I think that that conclusion is unwarranted. I do, however, think that the coverage and the so the writing on the walls type of speak is a little bit clickbaity. I don't think that if you have an Xbox console, you're going to be looking at yourself and being like, man, I wasted my money because I can just play Game Pass on my, I don't know, Switch or PlayStation or Asus ROG or whatever like that. Because, I mean, though some of that's true, I don't see why, you know, a company like Nintendo would bring Game Pass onto <clears throat> their console. Because Nintendo, as I've learned over these years, needs sales. I mean, they all need sales. PlayStation needs sales. PlayStation does not give away any of their games for free. And by free, I know it's not really free, you're paying monthly, but still. Nintendo isn't, uh, Nintendo and PlayStation both aren't putting games on their services that will uh, make it even equal to how Game Pass with Xbox's services like feels. Because with Game Pass, you're getting yourself uh, first party titles day one in the service and also with Game Pass it becomes this weird especially for multi-console gamers uh, situation where you're like do I really need to buy this game if it's just gonna be available to me in my subscription service down the line and that is a very very valid question to ask but with that question comes the reality that games aren't being purchased and so Nintendo and PlayStation, they can't afford to put a service onto their device that could potentially cannibalize sales down the line. So I don't see, I could be very wrong. And if I am wrong, okay, cool, man. Who cares? <laughs> Just a guy talking about video games. But I, I don't see how putting Game Pass or, um, yeah, Game Pass on Nintendo or PlayStation is happening anytime soon. So I believe that at least with the big three, uh, Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, Game Pass will exist in one spot. Now, if you're someone who also owns an Asus ROG, if you're someone who owns a, well, 
Steam Deck, not quite yet, but like a TV, I forgot which TVs was it? Was it Samsung TVs? That basically you don't even need a, a console, you can just stream games onto your TV. That's pretty crazy. Now, I got a device, which is in the other room, so I'm not gonna get it. And I'll talk about it eventually on this channel because I think that it's worth talking about. It's not gonna be a glowing review. I got the ABXY LUTE, ABXY LUTE, ABXY LUTE, whatever they wanna call it. Um, TV stop. Oh, my TV starting to. That was a fight. Now I have three people I'm competing with. I got freaking Henry over here who's back on the sauce. I got Larry who's, I think, on downers because Larry hasn't moved since I started talking to him. And now I have this thing. <sighs> Good Lord Almighty. Ellie the TV dude. Ellie the LG. Ellie the LG. So, back to the conversation. Sorry for the interruption from my office. Oh, wait, you're not Ellie? Your name is Thomas the Television? Okay, Thomas. You know there's a tank engine named the same thing. Anyway. Now, they also started to talk about AI and how AI is something that is, well, coming into the equation more and more and more. I don't think that AI is particularly exciting, but that is mine because I feel like in the creator space, AI has created these copy and paste style videos that is very, very obnoxious. And I personally have utilized the different services that exist that have incorporated AI into their thing. And I have since unsubscribed from those because though AI is a good tool and can help you come up with ideas, I ultimate feel, ultimately feel like it is quickly relied on as the end all be all because you are concerned with um, pleasing the robots essentially. And you get to a position where you are listening to AI before you're listening to human intuition. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that AI in the video game space is functioning the same way, but I was listening to um, uh, Spawn cast and he was talking about how AI uh, in when it comes to some of these oh he was he wasn't I, th I don't know if this was his idea or his understanding of it all or he was uh, re reporting or re talking about what they said in the interview but essentially they said that AI can run instances much faster and in mu at much higher scale than um, you can do by yourself as a human and I think that that is helpful, right? Why, like, why would you force yourself to do, it's like someone who does math, right? Like, why would I, as an accountant, force myself to use a pen and paper when I can use a calculator, right? Like that, that's kind of the same way I look at it. And, and I don't think that in that space it's necessarily wrong, but it does beg the question, is our robots and is AI going to start to, infiltrate the industry in such a way that it lessens the necessity for jobs, one, which is always scary, and two, is it going to create such type of a, a product that seems un, in, uninventive? Might be a word, I don't know. And that's always my concern when it comes to these kind of things and when it comes to any sort of incorporation of let's use more robots. Now, through and through, it is important to understand that I am not a developer. I do not understand these things. I am simply coming at it from a consumer standpoint, and I'm just an average guy, right? I just drink coffee in the morning, and in the afternoon, and in the evening, and talk about video games and my excitement for them. And I think it goes without, being, without saying that I uh, certainly am no authority when it comes to any sort of uh, predictions because I hate predictions. So I'm not going to give you one. Rather, I want to unravel some of the fantastic and quite eccentric predictions that are happening. I do not think that Xbox is going the Sega route. I do not think that you're going to all of a sudden see a system that is obsolete. I don't think anyone who is a PlayStation only 
or a Nintendo only person has grounds to celebrate because Xbox is gonna be no more. First off, if you're the kind of person waiting for Xbox to be no more to celebrate, get a life. <laughs> Do something, anything. That's such a lame thing to wait for. If you were waiting to, ha ha, look at you guys, Xbox people, you're lame. You're super lame. That does, that's like, who cares? It's a freaking video game console. I personally think that uh, there is going to be a necessity for hardware always because Xbox is able to deliver and give you a piece of hardware that can play the games in not necessarily a competing fashion to PlayStation and, and Nintendo Switch, but in rather a budget PC model. Let's be honest, all an Xbox is is a PC that has proprietary uh, UI and OS on it to allow you to run the games in a pretty much a launcher, essentially. That's all it is. Microsoft isn't breaking the bank when it comes to creating their consoles. Sure, they are losing money because all consoles lose money and Game Pass isn't necessarily raking in the cash when it comes to their, uh, I mean, not Game Pass, but game sales isn't really raking in the cash because of Game Pass, but I have no reason to believe that the Xbox as a console is going to cease to exist. Now, what I do believe is gonna happen is we're going to find less and less necessity for a system that allows you to purchase games for it. That I do believe. I do believe that we are going to go into, as we are seeing, all digital. Whether you like it or not is your own thing. My quick two cents on it is I personally don't like it. I much prefer to have physical copies as you can see, but also gonna be honest with you, I only purchase physical first party. That's it. I don't purchase physical third party with the exception of a few that have collector's edition kind of things going on. But I'm not gonna buy, you know, Assassin's Creed, Mirage. Uh, I don't really care to have that on a disc because I don't even know if all the games on the disc Am I gonna buy Final Fantasy Rebirth on a disc because it's two discs? Yeah, you better believe it. I'm gonna be doing that. But when it comes to physical digital, I am an all physical guy. Am I gonna go and scream and yell about it? No, because I have no pull when it comes to it. Am I gonna complain and be like, you need to watch out, they're gonna steal your games. If you say one bad thing about some sort of people group, they're gonna ban your account and you're gonna lose all your games. No, who, dude, like people who get that way need to just like, Maybe stop playing video games and just keep listening to more Joe Rogan. Like, just do that. Um, Russell Brand's also a good one. And you know what's even funnier about that statement is I listen to both those people. <laughs> I enjoy listening to Joe Rogan from time to time. And Russell Brand, he's entertaining. Continuing on. This cup is great, man. Cup 30, baby. Um, at the very, very end, I'm gonna tell you the plan. Okay, it's gonna be real quick sum up. I did a little poll in Discord. If you're not in the Discord, please join. Uh, we talk about everything, and I ask you very personal questions about myself. What I should do. Xbox. It ain't going no way else. Okay, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine, and uh, for those of you rooting for it to fall, it's not going to. I do think that the general landscape of Microsoft is gonna be service-based. We're seeing it through and through. Some of their big, huge games that they really were counting on didn't necessarily deliver the promise, but they have a lot to fall back on. They have these acquisitions that have taken place. They have uh, their service that is pretty good. If I'm being honest, Game Pass is a great service. I find no value, no, not no value. I don't find high value in it personally because the games that they offer me as a gamer, I can take or leave. But other people found tremendous value in it. And I cannot argue that during all of 2021, I was a firm believer of the service because I found a lot of value in it. But here in 2023, my value is found elsewhere. But looking at how Microsoft is delivering is really exciting on what they're able to do and what they want to do. It just, you're starting to look at these, the, I look over here because it's where my three consoles are. I'm starting to look at my, my city of consoles, right? And the three that I have, which are my the Power 3, Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation. And I look at that and I say, yeah, I can understand where the necessity for an Xbox may start to change. 
is it necessary for you to buy the machine? No, which it is smart. I think it is smart that Xbox is developing ways for you to play on anything, whether it's your phone, this, that, and the other. Now, again, I have the, the that one console that I was mentioning earlier that is a cloud gaming only. It's 200 bucks versus the 350 for Logitech. I don't love the experience, but I can see how these cloud only types of things are going to be a viable option for people to play games anywhere, however you want. Can you play it on your phone through xCloud? Yes. Can you play it on this thing through cloud gaming, xCloud, whatever? Yes. Is it somewhat laggy? Yeah, I'm trying to play Lies of P, a very, very reaction-based game on a cloud streaming device is tough. It looks good enough and it's pretty impressive what it can do, but it by no stretch is something I would consider to be my primary way of playing. But if Xbox can really nail this cloud thing, because Lord knows PlayStation isn't able to do it, and they released hardware specifically to do it, and it still fell short, not really working, and Nintendo is able to pull off the cloud gaming, or gaming from the cloud kind of situation, but even that, not to, you, you, you need a lot, right? And it's kind of a bummer with some of those games that they do, but we'll see what they're able to pull off. I just see Xbox being first to this. I see Xbox really being able to utilize and leverage their resources, or Microsoft rather, to make this happen. It would take something like Microsoft, right? It would take a company that is a computer company, an OS company, a massive, huge, ginormous technology company like Microsoft to be able to pull something like this off. And I don't think that it's far-fetched to, to believe that Microsoft is going to pretty much punch, push all their efforts into the Xbox sector into this cloud thing. I don't think that that's far-fetched at all. In fact, I really think that moving into the next life cycle of gaming, we'll still get a device for Xbox, but it may not be necessary to own one. That I do believe. I don't believe it's because it'll be available on PlayStation, though they say they want to bring it over. I don't think it's because it's going to be available on Nintendo. And if it is on both of those, great. God, stupid mustache hair. Ugh. <sighs> Having facial hair is in some ways the best because it's the most majestic thing a man can do. But it comes at a cost. Itchy nose syndrome. INS. Every day, itchy nose. Itchy nose. I'm very warm in this flannel, but I like flannels. It's flannel season. That's my two to seven cents on the Xbox thing. I think that we're gonna be okay. <laughs> and AI, this is a this this whole this whole thing, if I may, stick with me, please. If I may talk about what happened these past 30 days, this whole thing is essentially a response to AI, a middle finger to AI, a middle finger to the idea of templated, highly produced, extremely to, for the algorithm type of thing. I saw a thing it, that was taking me down. It was taking me and putting me in a place where I was very, very uh, self-conscious, very, very depressed at times and very, very focused on what other people thought of me and what an algorithm, what a, a, non, a non-existent entity, a very, very real uh, thing, but a non-existent entity was doing to my creative efforts. And so I said, F it. Let's throw every rule out the window and let's only do uh, something that is the opposite of what you're supposed to do. And let's run your, you know, run a talking head, no cuts, do something in the background that is seemingly uninteresting to some, but to some it, it isn't. Oh, real quick recipe. Um, so 15, uh, the five on the O2. Now here's here's good old faithful, uh, Gary the Grinder. Um, with Gary the Grinder, we have the uh, 14 clicks. This is the Time More Chestnut V2, I believe, V2. Um, 14 clicks from the stop, okay? 14 clicks is the same on my Kenya AA from Rapport Coffee Roasters. All recipes will have um, two grind settings, maybe three, don't quote me. It's always gonna be the Ode 2. Now this is the Ode 2 with SSP burrs. 
and it might be like it's gonna change at times because of calibration but this is the fellow o2 with ssp burst and then this will be the time more hand grinder this grinder is like 60 to 80 bucks depending on how you do it this is such a good grinder better than any better better than my uh plug-in grinder i had before but this is such a great grinder if you are uh following along so i'll always give you recipes for both okay time more i mean time more gary the grinder and we have the ode two this is uh we'll come up with a name maybe you guys can name the ode two i'm leaning on olivander because olivander is a great name it's a solid name olivander the ode yeah olivander and gary there's so many things in here that's coming alive. <laughs> it's just like my own little Hogwarts house. <laughs> What's our house gonna be named? Oh my gosh. Are we making a fifth house? We are. We are, let's do it. Back to what I was talking about. This whole thing was a response to AI. I saw myself going into autopilot, letting the robots tell me what to do. And I said, you know, imagine middle fingers. And so that's what we did. And I realized that over these 30 days, this wasn't, uh, at first this was something I was like, yeah, let's make this, but this was for me. This, I learned more about myself in 30 days doing this than at any time I've ever done anything. If I'm being honest with you, this has been the most enlightening thing I've ever done. I've learned a lot personally, I've learned a lot spiritually, I've learned a lot physically and things that I need to do and take care of myself physically. And there's just a lot. And there's, you know, there's something online called vlogging. Um, video blogging and I don't think that this is what it was at all at first I was like yeah vlog style just talking head this is I don't know how to any other way to put it but journaling video journaling vernaling a long-form talking head piece expressing how I feel about a certain thing and man has it been amazing so what's next well it's pretty simple what I want to do is build off this this is a really good base, a really awesome base, if I'm being honest. And much like coffee, when you have a drink, like a latte, let me explain very simply, uh, espresso is the base of any drink. You have to have that in every drink. Espresso based drinks, that is. That is the stuff that comes out of the machine, the little liquid gold. From there, if you want a flat white, it's about six extra ounces of milk. If you want a cappuccino, we're going traditional cappuccino, not this silly Starbucks stuff, which is just the scoop foam in, that's lame. Flat white is gonna be a texture that is that of a latte. A little bit thinner, but still have that creaminess on top, that, that foam so we talk about. If we're looking for cappuccino, it's gonna be similar, except in size, except there's gonna be a little bit more texture, more air added to the milk. If we're going latte, it's just gonna be more milk, right? And then if we go bigger from there, a latte that's maybe 16 ounces or something like that. A mocha or a vanilla latte, you're just taking a latte and you're adding vanilla. A mocha, you're just taking a latte and you're adding chocolate. And we can get super crazy with that, but that's what we have is we have the base. And I feel like it's fitting, this walnut table, this 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 whole dark aesthetic. This is our base. This is the spro, as we would say. This is the coffee base. So how do we build out our drinks? How do we build out from here? Well, I wanna leverage, not leverage, but sorry, not leverage, but I want to utilize this format, starting with making a cup of coffee and then adding a flavor to that cup of coffee, like music, uh, maybe a little bit more texture to that cup of coffee, like some B-roll, maybe adding, you know, a little bit uh, whipped cream on top, some reviews or whatever it may be. But the base is always gonna be something that we all have now grown familiar with, which is a more casual approach to talking about this very thing we call video games. I don't have my mug with me, but I think that the most important thing I can hit home is that the whole purpose of this channel, when it started, was to get people excited about playing video games. Not so much about the video game industry, though I do feel like my purpose here is to help shape and reform what is now known as the gaming industry uh, with some of the negativity that exists there and try to repurpose, not repurpose, realign to more of a positive and practical way of looking about it. It's great to see that these 30 days of videos have changed my demographic from 18 year olds to now 35 to 44 year olds. That's me, 35 in like a month. And so that's gonna be exciting to celebrate. I plan on doing this by toning back the volume. So 
Let's talk about that. These cups are here to stay, at least to a certain extent. They may not be as long, actually they won't be as long as they were, but they're here. Making a cup of coffee and talking about video games is always here to stay. But we're going from seven videos a week down to two videos a week. We're just gonna have two videos a week and it's going to be very simple. We're going to review, we're going to talk about what's happening in exciting ways about video games, stuff like that. Talk about what's happening in exciting ways, weird stuff. My way of interacting with you is gonna be on Discord. If you're part of the Discord, great, awesome. More so, your way of interacting with me is Discord or on Twitch with Twitch streams, at least for the rest of the year, and then we'll reassess in January. I do that two times a week, today being one of them. Today, if you're watching this as this goes live, is Thursday, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. to around 9 to 10 p.m. Pacific time, I am on Twitch live. I'm gonna be doing that both Mondays and Thursdays as it stands. Do I wanna stream more? Absolutely. Will I allow myself to do so? No. I'm sticking to this for the rest of the year. So Mondays and Thursdays, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., we are going to be live. And by we, I mean us as a community, but I am gonna be live. I don't have another person here. I'm gonna be live on Twitch. It's my channel, <laughs> okay? From there, we have two videos and two streams, and then I am going to see and investigate and see what it would look like to add one more video, which is going to be much longer and it's going to be more of a podcast style video. And that would be a cup with somebody else live. I'm looking to see if that's possible. I will not do, not live, sorry, in person. I will not do digital. Digital stuff is left for another project I'm working on with my buddy Chase. We'll see how that goes, Bash Bros. But as far as caffeine and consoles uh, podcast, that would be, I'm making a cup of coffee for someone else and we're talking about video games um, and stuff like that. So the last thing I wanna hammer home is my interests. <laughs> my interest in all this is to play video games with other people and well, that is what was called the Cartridge Club and then the Cartridge Society and now is play. Play is going to be a monthly game of the month playthrough that we do together, all of us. There's no paywall, there's nothing there. It is just, I will say, this is the game that we're gonna play and we all go through it and talk about our experiences, which I think is very necessary, especially for us single player lovers. In doing so, we can have good times, we can do Discord calls and just talk about our chapters, stuff like that, and just treat it like a book club. Maybe in that we'll have a weekly get together on Discord, something like that which I think would be a really, really fun thing to do. But I don't have anything more to give you as far as details about play, except for that we are going to start by playing a very fun game together in December, which I'll announce tonight on Twitch. The schedule as far as my videos posting each month or each week or each week is going to be uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. And so we'll go live every Monday and Wednesday, I mean every Monday and Thursday, and we will be doing um, the videos every Tuesday and Friday. And that is as simple as that. They'll go live in the morning time. I'm thinking to keep them around the same time, between sometime between seven and nine, depending on if I have to finish the edit up before it posts. But that's pretty much what I'm gonna be looking at. Tuesdays and Fridays. This Friday I was gonna post a video and try to really, really hammer one and get one together. I'm not gonna force myself to do that because I want the first one back to be really, really good. But I can tell you right now that it is going to start here. This is where we're starting. We're starting with a cup and we're gonna be expanding on that. This is the beginning, even though this is season three, this is the beginning of the next chapter, the next time in this is channel's history. And I'm very, very excited and feel very refreshed. And um, these past 30 days have been and reflecting on it, just some of the most powerful 30 days that I have done as a creator. I am very thankful for those of you who stuck around through all of this. I am even more thankful for those of you who have uh, given your input and have commented below. I am just so unbelievably grateful for that. I've seen a tremendous amount of positivity in all of this, and um, in a lot of it, it was very humbling to go from feeding an algorithm and seeing what that looks like, and then feeding a community and seeing what that looks like. I'd much rather feed a community and be a part of that and whatever that, however that goes 
and get rid of all the vanity metrics and really, really be intentional with stuff than um, the other side of things. And so you'll probably see a lot of coverage of Nintendo stuff because that's where my heart is as I build stuff out. And the big, giant, long form project that I hope to, uh, to have come to fruition before I have my 1000th cup, which who knows how long it'll take for me to get there at this point. But before I have my 1000th cup is going to be to have a standalone actual coffee shop where I can make a cup of coffee for somebody and it's a real place. That coffee shop will have a uh, multitude of things there, um, one of it being the Nintendo Museum that I want to build. And so those two in tandem are going to be very much so a part of this, is, this, this channel's journey. Uh, I am excited to uh, dive deep into what it looks like to acquire all of these things. I want to get Nintendo uh, hardware, old Nintendo hardware, playable Nintendo hardware, and learn as much as I can about that, the history of Nintendo, and just dive into where my passion is. Because when I look at these guys here, like Amari, Luigi, any of those guys, I see them just laying around. Yesterday I was out sitting on my computer working late at night because I was at Disneyland all day. I was looking, I look over to my desk because this thing was off to the side and I see them and I got so unbelievably inspired and I cannot throw that outside. I cannot. There's no other thing in my office that I can look at that gets me more inspired than my Nintendo products. Than looking at my Game Boy book and being like, oh, I am so inspired and I cannot throw that aside. If I've learned anything in the past 30 days is that it is so important to speak deeply and to listen to as well what inspires you and what shakes you up and what stirs you. And so for me, that's where it is. Does that mean, is that me announcing that this is never gonna cover any PlayStation or Xbox things? No. What that is simply saying is that, yes, I am Nintendo biased. I do see myself as someone who enjoys that more and I'm really excited to see what the future of Nintendo has to hold. So expect probably a lot of that. Okay, we're done. This got chopped up a bunch because it got interrupted a bunch, but you know what? That's where we're at. Thank you for 30 days. I will see you guys tonight on stream. Please join me. But if you don't, you can watch it replays. I don't know. Twitch is weird. Um, I guess I'll see you on Tuesday. All right. As always, happy gaming.